There's a piece of equipment that makes you basically invincible against medieval weapons. It weighs 25 pounds, costs $2,000, and would turn any peasant soldier into an unstoppable killing machine that knights in $50,000 plate armor couldn't touch. It's called modern body armor. The Battle of Agincourt would have lasted 20 minutes instead of three hours. In 1346 at Cressy, English longbowmen destroyed the French cavalry. Arrows pierced plate armor at 200 yards. Knights died in their saddles before they could reach English lines. 1,500 French nobles were killed. The longbow was the medieval equivalent of a sniper rifle. It could punch through the most advanced armor of its time from distances that made counterattack impossible. In 1415 at Agincourt, it happened again. French knights, in full plate armor, charged English positions. Longbow arrows found gaps in armor joints, armpits, neck, visor slits. English men-at-arms with poleaxes finished wounded knights on the ground. 6,000 French soldiers died. The English lost 400. Medieval armor was incredible technology, but it had weaknesses that medieval weapons could exploit. A U.S. soldier in Afghanistan wore a plate carrier with level 5 ceramic plates. Taliban fighters shot him seven times with AK-47 as at 50 yards. The armor stopped every round. He had bruises. They had to retreat. Modern body armor doesn't just reduce injury. It makes the wearer nearly immune to the weapons being used against them. But here's what should blow your mind about this scenario. If you dropped a single modern soldier wearing current military body armor into medieval Europe, they would be functionally invincible against every weapon of the era. Not just protected, invincible. And if you equipped an entire medieval army with modern armor, the balance of power would shift so drastically that warfare itself would become impossible in its medieval form. This is what would actually happen if modern body armor existed in medieval Europe. Why medieval weapons literally cannot defeat it, and how one piece of 21 set century technology would make knights obsolete overnight and rewrite 400 years of European history. Let's get something straight first. Medieval plate armor was incredible for its time. A full suit of Italian Gothic plate armor from 1450 was a masterpiece of metallurgy and engineering. It weighed 50-60 pounds, cost the equivalent of a luxury car, and took master armorers months to craft. Knights who could afford it were walking tanks. But here's the brutal reality. That armor had massive vulnerabilities. Joints needed gaps to allow movement, armpits, elbows, knees, Groin. These gaps could be exploited by arrows, crossbow bolts, or thrust weapons. The visor had eye slits that arrows could penetrate. The neck had articulated plates that could be forced open. Even the best plate armor had dozens of weak points that skilled opponents knew exactly how to target, and it was exhausting to wear. Fifty pounds distributed across your body means every movement requires extra effort. Fighting in plate armor for more than 20 minutes left, even the fittest knights gasping. Mounting a horse required assistance. If you fell down, getting back up was a struggle. The armor protected you, but it also slowed you down and tired you out. Now compare that to modern body armor. A standard military plate carrier with level 5 ceramic plates weighs 20 miters 25 pounds. That's less than half the weight of medieval plate armor. It covers your vital organs, chest, back, sides, with composite ceramic and polyethylene plates that can stop rifle rounds traveling at 3,000 feet per second. And unlike medieval armor, it has zero gaps. The coverage area is continuous. There are no weak points to exploit. The technology gap is absurd. Medieval armor was steel plates that could be pierced by arrows bolts, and thrusting weapons if you hit the gaps. Modern armor is ceramic composite plates designed to stop projectiles moving faster than sound. It's not an upgrade. It's a completely different category of protection. Let's talk specifics. What actually happens when a medieval knight swings a sword at someone wearing a modern plate carrier? The answer is absolutely nothing. 
Medieval swords were designed to exploit plate armor's weaknesses. You couldn't cut through plate armor with a sword. The steel was too thick and too hard. So knights used techniques called half-swording, where you grab your blade halfway down and use the sword as a lever to force gaps in armor open. Works great against medieval armor. Against modern body armor? Useless. The ceramic plates have no gaps, no joints, no articulation points, just a solid surface covering your entire chest and back. You can swing a sword at it all day. The blade will chip. The plate won't crack. Medieval swords were designed to exploit weaknesses that modern armor doesn't have. What about arrows? This is where it gets truly ridiculous. An English longbow could generate 150, 180 pounds of draw weight and launch an arrow at 180 feet per second. That's impressive. A bodkin point arrow could pierce plate armor at close range if it hit straight on. Against modern body armor, that same arrow wouldn't even dent the ceramic plate. Here's why. Modern level 5 plates are tested against 0 .30 miter 06 armor piercing rounds, traveling at 2,880 feet per second with 3,800 foot pounds of energy. A longbow arrow has about 150 foot pounds of energy. That's 25 times less energy than what the armor is designed to stop. The arrow would hit the plate, the tip would break, and the wearer would barely feel it. It's like throwing a tennis ball at a tank. Crossbows. Same story. A medieval crossbow hit harder than a longbow, maybe 200 foot-pounds of energy, still nowhere near enough to defeat armor designed to stop rifle bullets. The bolt would shatter against the plate. What about melee weapons, maces, war hammers? Pole axes. This is the one area where medieval weapons might do something. These weapons were specifically designed to defeat plate armor through blunt force trauma. You can't cut through plate, so you hit it so hard that the force transfers through the armor and breaks bones underneath. But here's the problem. Modern body armor includes trauma padding, foam layers between the plate and your body that absorb impact. When a bullet hits the plate, the padding prevents the blunt force from breaking ribs. Same principle works against maces and hammers. You'd feel the hit. You might get bruised, but the trauma padding would prevent serious injury. And remember, the medieval knight swinging that mace is exhausted from fighting in 60 pounds of plate armor. You're wearing 25 pounds and still fresh. The medieval knight would tire out before they hurt you. That's not hyperbole. That's physics. Okay, let's run the scenario. You take a modern soldier, let's say an army infantryman, and drop them into the middle of the Battle of Agincourt in 1415. They're wearing a standard plate carrier with level 5 ceramic plates protecting chest, back, and sides. They have a helmet. They're carrying a modern rifle with 200 rounds of ammunition and a combat knife. The French cavalry charges. 1,500 mounted knights in full plate armor thundering across the field. In actual history, English longbowmen stopped this charge by killing horses and forcing knights to fight on foot in mud. Our modern soldier? Modern rifles fire at 2,700 miters 3,000 feet per second. Plate armor was never designed to stop projectiles moving that fast with that much energy. Each shot punches clean through steel plate, like it's cardboard. Knights are wearing armor that cost a year's income from an estate. It's useless. They're falling from horses before they get within 100 yards. The ones who survive the initial volley keep charging because they don't understand what's happening. They think arrows are hitting them. They don't comprehend that a weapon exists that can kill them from 300 yards away through armor that's supposed to make them invincible. By the time the charge reaches our soldier's position, 500 knights are dead. The ones who make it are exhausted from riding through volleys of fire that sound like thunder and kill instantly. They swing swords at our soldier. Our soldier shoots them point blank. They die confused, not understanding how they could be killed while wearing the most advanced armor in the world. The medieval army breaks and runs, not because they're cowards, but because they're facing something they have no framework to understand.
a single enemy who can't be hurt and kills at distances that make counterattack impossible. It's not warfare, it's slaughter, and armies don't fight when fighting means certain death with zero chance of victory. One soldier, modern body armor, and a rifle. An entire medieval army, routed. That's not science fiction. That's just the technology gap. Now let's scale it up. What if you could mass-produce modern body armor in medieval Europe? What if you equipped an entire army, 10,000 soldiers with level 5 plate carriers? Warfare becomes hilariously one-sided. Your army advances across the battlefield. Enemy archers loose arrows. The arrows bounce off your soldiers' armor like rain hitting pavement. Your men don't even slow down. They walk through arrow volleys that should be devastating. The enemy panics because their primary ranged weapon is useless. Your army reaches their lines. Enemy knights charge. They're wearing 60 pounds of plate armor. Your soldiers are wearing 25 pounds of modern armor. Less tired and just as protected, the knights swing swords and axes. Your soldiers' armor has no gaps to exploit. The knights are targeting weak points that don't exist. Your soldiers counterattack with whatever weapons they're carrying. The weight and exhaustion advantage means your men win every melee engagement. Within an hour, the enemy army is destroyed. Not defeated, destroyed. Their weapons can't hurt you. Your weapons work normally against them. It's not a battle. It's an execution. But here's where it gets really interesting. After the first few battles, no one will fight you anymore. Word spreads that your army wears magic armor that makes them invincible. Arrows bounce off. Swords can't cut them. They don't get tired. They can't be killed. Enemy armies will surrender without fighting because fighting is pointless. Warfare in medieval Europe ends. Not because of peace treaties or diplomacy, but because combat becomes impossible when one side literally cannot be harmed by the other side's weapons. Your kingdom conquers Europe, not through brilliant strategy, but through a technology advantage so overwhelming that resistance is futile. If modern body armor existed in medieval Europe, the entire power structure collapses. Here's why. Knights become obsolete overnight. A knight's power came from two things. Armor that made them nearly invulnerable on the battlefield, and the wealth required to afford that armor. A suit of plate armor cost as much as a small estate. Only nobles could afford it. This economic barrier kept military power concentrated in the aristocracy. Modern body armor cost $2,000. That's expensive, but not prohibitively expensive. A wealthy merchant could afford it. A guild could equip its members. A town militia could pool resources and buy 50 sets. Suddenly, Commoners have access to protection that's better than what nobles can afford. The military advantage of the aristocracy evaporates. The feudal system collapses. Feudalism existed because peasants needed protection from armored knights and couldn't provide it themselves. Lords offered protection in exchange for labor and loyalty. But if peasants can buy armor that makes them invincible against knights, they don't need lords anymore. The entire social contract breaks down. Castles become useless. Medieval castles existed to protect against siege weapons and infantry assaults. If your army is equipped with armor that stops arrows and melee weapons, you don't need castles. You can fight in the open field with near-zero casualties. The architectural response to medieval warfare becomes irrelevant when warfare itself is transformed. The Hundred Years' War ends in five years instead of 116. France and England fought for over a century because neither side could achieve decisive victory. Whoever gets modern body armor first wins immediately. They march their invincible army across Europe, and no one can stop them. Battles that historically lasted hours are over in minutes. Sieges that lasted months are over in days. Everything changes, not gradually not through social evolution. Overnight, the moment modern body armor appears, the entire medieval military system becomes obsolete. Castles are useless, feudalism collapses, power shifts to whoever controls the technology. 
Look, I know this is a hypothetical scenario. Modern body armor didn't exist in medieval Europe. But this thought experiment reveals something important about technology gaps and how they change everything. Throughout history, single technologies have rewritten entire civilizations. Gunpowder made castles obsolete. Stirrups made cavalry dominant for 1,000 years. The longbow shifted power from cavalry to infantry. These weren't incremental improvements. They were revolutionary technologies that changed who won battles and who held power. Modern body armor in medieval Europe would be the ultimate example. It wouldn't just change tactics or strategy. It would make warfare impossible in its existing form. The gap between medieval weapons and modern armor is so vast that combat becomes one-sided to the point of absurdity. And we're living through similar gaps right now. Drones versus traditional air forces. Cyber warfare versus physical infrastructure. AI versus human decision-making. These aren't just advantages, they're categorical superiority that makes conventional approaches obsolete. Just like medieval knights couldn't comprehend how their best armor became useless against modern protection, we might not recognize when our best technology becomes irrelevant against someone else's breakthrough. The medieval knight charging a soldier in modern armor, that's what it looks like when you're on the wrong side of a technology gap. You're doing everything right according to the old rules. You're wearing the best armor. You're using the best techniques. You're highly trained and experienced. And none of it matters because the rules changed and you didn't realize it yet. That soldier survives. The knight doesn't. Not because of skill or courage or determination. Because of technology, if modern body armor existed in medieval Europe, Knights would die confused, never understanding how armor that cost a fortune and protected them for decades suddenly became useless against an enemy who couldn't be hurt. Warfare would end, the social order would collapse, and 400 years of history would be rewritten by 25 pounds of ceramic plates. That's the power of revolutionary technology. It makes the old way of fighting obsolete. And whoever has it first doesn't just gain an advantage. They gain the ability to win without fighting because fighting them becomes impossible. One piece of modern equipment. Entire civilizations transformed. That's what happens when the technology gap is absolute. And that's what would happen if you brought modern body armor to medieval Europe. Invincibility isn't magic. It's just being 600 years ahead on material science.